Okay, here's another lesson about fractions. We're going to talk about fractions again today. Today is May 21st, 2020, and we are on the Chapter 16 Fractions Lesson 4. Your page numbers are page 317 to 318. But we're going to get to that in just a second because I have a couple of things that I want to share with you. Okay, a good friend of mine found this excellent book. It's called The Hershey's Milk Chocolate Fraction Book. So we're going to talk about that. She also is letting me use her Hershey bar as a model for what we're going to talk about. So if you wanted to look this up and see this whole entire book read, there's the uh, link and there's somebody else reading that one, but she does an excellent job. I'm just gonna read most of it. And technically, you can actually take an ARP quiz on this. Okay, so there we are, first page, and you see a Hershey's Milk, milk Chocolate Bar, just almost exactly like this one, and it says, Milk Chocolate, ooh, delicious. Here is a Hershey's milk chocolate bar, the kind Milton Hershey made famous. Before we eat it, we are going to learn about fractions. Let's start by taking the wrapper off. Remember, don't litter. So if we have the wrapper off the chocolate bar, you notice like there's sections of chocolate bar and each one of them says Hershey's on it. It's almost like a little mini chocolate bar within the chocolate bar. And that's one whole chocolate bar. Here we have one whole milk chocolate candy bar. And what is a fraction? A fraction is a part or a portion of the whole thing. We're using a Hershey's milk chocolate bar as a whole thing. If you break this candy bar apart, you will see 12 equal sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So then our fractions become 12 twelfths. And what we already know from what we've learned so far about fractions is that 12 twelfths is equal to one over one which is also equal to one whole. You can st stack the 12 equal sections on top of each other. Hey, it looks different, but any way you arrange them, they still equal one whole candy bar. Yesterday, if you remember on our lesson, we learned about unit fractions. So here's a unit fraction, one twelfth. Maybe this is the easiest way to understand fractions. What would you rather eat? One twelfth of a candy bar or 11 twelfths of a candy bar? What do you think? If you love milk cho chocolate, the answer is simple. As you can see, doing fractions can be fun. So this is a unit fraction, one twelfth, in other words, right here, you can see that little piece of chocolate. There are 12 even sections, but we're only talking about one right there. On this page, what we have is 11 twelfths because one of those is gone and there's 11 left. Okay, you could also split the candy bar into one half. So you notice there, they just have one half of the Hershey's milk chocolate candy bar. And here is the other half. But if you notice what they've done is they've made it into six twelfths. Six twelfths is equal to one half. When two fractions equal each other, they're called equivalent fractions. And you're gonna learn more about that when you get to third grade. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna skip 
to the very end because this has to do with something we're going to talk about today in our lesson. Okay, so it's this page right here. And what you notice is instead of 12 twelfths, they have the whole candy bar here, but then they have an extra 1 twelfth. So what they actually have is 13 twelfths. So the number on the top of the fraction is bigger than the number on the bottom. This is bigger than one whole because we see there's a whole candy bar there and there's one extra 12. And the way that we read that is 13 twelfths. And that actually is called an improper fraction. So whenever you have a fraction where the numerator, that's the number on the top, remember north n, the numerator is larger than the denominator, that's called improper fractions. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about that today. Okay, so before we start on this lesson right here, I wanted to show you something that I have that I can just show you as a demonstration. So I made this, and if you'll notice, it's a square, and I've split it into four sections, equal parts. So I could say that this is equal to four, Oh, my good pen isn't working. Okay, just one moment. Here we go. I could say that this is equal to four fourths. And as you know, because we've talked about this a lot, probably the most important thing you're gonna learn about fractions is when the number's the same on the bottom and the top, it equals one whole. And I can write one whole like that, or of course, you know this, you knew this in uh, first grade, you can write one whole like that, just the number one, nothing wrong with that. Now, here's the interesting thing. I also have this. So only pay attention to the blue sections. You'll notice that there's a little green section here, so that's missing. So what I have is four fourths here and I have another square exactly the same, but there are only three blue squares in there. There's still four equal sections, but in this one there are three fourths. So if we count our fourths all together, we're going to see what we have. We have one, two, three, four. We already talked about that. Five, six, seven. So now I have seven total fourths. So this is more than one because this is one and this is not quite a whole nother one, right? So this together equals seven fourths. And that's what we're going to talk about excuse me, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Holes and parts. A fraction can name one whole or more than one whole. The whole square is purple. Four fourths equals one and four fourths are purple. Four fourths are purple. Now over here we have four fourths, and then we have two more that are shaded in. So instead of being one whole, this is now six fourths. Six fourths are yellow. So six fourths is obviously more than one, just like my seven fourths is more than one as well. So now we're gonna look down here. It says circle the fraction that names the shaded part. So let's count together. These shapes are divided into thirds. So I can check and see. Remember yesterday I was doing dots. 
one, two, three. So these are definitely divided into thirds. But this is a second circle. So this is one whole because it's three thirds. And then this one more is also shaded. So I have one, two, three, four thirds. So that means that this one is the correct answer, four thirds. Number two, we have a whole circle right here and it's divided into fourths. That's interesting because I have fourths right here, but it's square. But this is a circle and it's still fourths because it's a whole shape divided into four equal parts. But there's, it's not three parts because I don't have one that's blank. So all four are shaded in. So what I have is four fourths. We could also say that this shape is one whole. But because that's not an option, we're going to say four fourths. And remember, I've told you several times, that's one of the most important things you're going to learn in fractions, is that when you have the same number over the same number, it's one whole. That could be 400 over 400, and it would still be equal to one whole. Okay, now I have triangles, and I have a triangle split in half. So it's split into two equal parts, one, two. And then I have a second triangle also split into two equal parts, but only one of them is shaded. So let's count, one, two, three. So I know that this is split into two equal parts and that I have three of them. So this is actually going to be three halves. Number four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have a shape, looks like a rectangle, that's split into six equal parts. So this can't be right because it says fourths on the bottom. That isn't possibly true. This says five fifths. This says six sixths. Well, technically, these two are equivalent fractions because they're both equal to one. But I'm gonna go ahead and circle this one because this is really split into six pieces and all six of them are shaded. Okay, let's go to math talk down here. It says, how do you know that five over five is equal to one whole? You guys know because we did division and fraction is really a division problem. This line right here is the division problem. So what it's saying is five divided by five. So I could write it like this, five divided by five equals one. Uh, one of the ways we've talked about this before when we were talking about division was we said that division is the opposite of multiplication. So another way we could prove that this is true is we could say, I know for sure that one times five equals five. So that's how I know that a fraction where it's five fifths is definitely one whole. And you could write that in another way. You could explain it another way. That's the whole point of math talk. It's for you to give yourself a chance to think about what you know and then write it down in the way that it makes sense to you. Don't leave it blank. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next slide. We're only going to do one lesson today, two whole pages. So we're not doing um, four pages like we did yesterday. So I'm gonna move my fractions here. Okay, so what we have here is more where we're talking about holes and parts. It says write the fraction for the shaded parts. So it looks like I only have one hole there. And let's count to see how many parts 
it's divided into one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to call this five fifths. We were just talking about that on the other page. Five fifths is equal to one whole. In fact, we could even write this. Just to show that we understand what that means. And that's okay. Number seven, we have a triangle that's split into two. But only this left side is shaded yellow. So I know it's split into two. So for my denominator, I'm going to put the number two. And because only one part is shaded, I'm going to put the number one. So we would read that one half. And as you know for sure, one half is not equal to one whole. If it was two halves, that would be a different story. Okay, it looks like we have two shapes here. They happen to be hexagons because they're six-sided. So let's count this first one and see. Two, three, four, five, six. So not only does it have six sides, but it's split into six pieces. So I have six pieces there, but I have another one right here. So that looks like that's gonna be more than one whole, right? An improper fraction where we have the number on the top is larger than the number on the bottom. So I'm gonna put a dot on that, and I'm gonna call that seven sixths. The reason why I call it sixths is because each one of those shapes is split into six sections. Oh, look, these are split into six as well, but it's a different shape. This is a rectangle, two, four, six, but then I have seven, eight. Remember, this is one whole. This is more than one whole. So I'm gonna call this one eight, and just so that you can see how this word is spelled, it's not in your lesson at all, but it is something that I want to just stick a little bit into your brain. This is called an improper fraction. And if you're one of those people like me, who really love fractions and love math, and you wanna learn more about that, there's a lot of good videos on this slide presentation where you can learn more about improper fractions. And this one is particularly good. It just shows um, another teacher who's explaining to her class about improper fractions. Okay, so it looks like this one is split into thirds. It's a circle. So I can count one, two, three. There's definitely thirds, but only two of them are shaded. So then I'm gonna write that two thirds. And if you notice, that is not an improper fraction. Most fractions, in fact, all fractions that are less than one, have the number on top smaller than the number on the bottom. And remember, this is the numerator this is the denominator. Okay, it looks like we're gonna have an improper fraction here because we have one rectangle and then we have another rectangle. And it looks like they're split into five parts. So I have five on the top, but then I have six, seven, eight. So my bottom number is gonna be a five and my top number is going to be an eight numerator, denominator. This too is an improper fraction because it has a bigger number on the top than on the bottom and because we know it's bigger than one. Okay, so it looks like a square and let's see how many parts this is divided into. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's that most important fact about fractions. I have eight eighths or one whole. When you have eight eighths or when you have one whole written as a fraction, 
that is not an improper fraction. It's only an improper fraction if the number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom. Okay, last one, number 13. And it looks like I have one, two, three shapes. They're circles, and they're all split into thirds. So I'm gonna do a little skip counting by three. Three, six, seven, eight. So my number on the bottom is going to be thirds. My number on the top is going to be eight. And we would read that fraction eight thirds. And that is also an improper fraction. Okay? Problem solving reasoning. So now I have to do some thinking here. These fractions fell off the chart. So here's our chart. It says less than one whole, one whole, more than one whole. Where do they belong? Write each fraction on the chart. Tell how you solved. Okay, so I'm gonna start with less than one whole, and if I remember correctly, that means the number on the top is less than the number on the bottom. So let's see, three halves, no, that couldn't be right. Five fifths, well, I know that's one whole. One fourth, okay. So I could write one fourth in there because I know one fourth is less than one whole. Remember, if I put this back up and I said I'm not looking at the blue sections anymore, I'm gonna just look at the green section, then the green section would be one fourth and definitely not one whole. Definitely, definitely only a piece of that whole square. Okay, so now it says, what about the ones that are one whole? Okay, three halves, no, that's an improper fraction. Five fifths, yes, that is correct. Now what I notice is there's a couple of different numbers you could put in each one of these boxes. So let's say I, I didn't want to use five fifths, and I don't expect you to write both for sure, but I can keep going on my list. Oh, look, I got to nine ninths, and that's also one whole. So I'm gonna write that again, just for people who happen to see that first, okay? And the same goes for one fourth right here. If you didn't wanna put one fourth, if you put two sixths, that would also be correct. Okay, the last one says more than one whole. So these, these are gonna be the ones that are improper fractions. Three halves, boom, right away. We've already talked about that. The number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom. Three halves is definitely more than one whole. But I'm gonna write down seven fifths because seven fifths is also an improper fraction. Okay, and then it says, tell how you solved. So I'm gonna draw a little arrow up here. I'm gonna say I compared the top, a little too close there, the top number, so that's a little symbol that means number. I compared the top number with the bottom number. And that's how I decided which one was more than a whole and which one was less than a whole and which one was one whole. Okay, once again, if you've written that a different way, that's okay. You know, these kind of questions are really good because it's where you have to really think about your thinking. So that's something we want you to do. Okay, there's one more section of our math lesson for today, but it, it's something I would believe that most of you enjoy for sure. So the last part of the lesson for today is Gigi. 
and you're going to be doing Gigi for 20 minutes. Keep in mind, we can also tell who's doing Gigi and who's not. And then I wanted to share with you, you guys know how much I love number blocks. So this is very similar. It's also made in England. It's British. And this is called number jacks. And the nice thing about number jacks is they're a little more complicated and they deal with fractions. So it's kind of funny, a little cartoon. Don't be scared of this guy. This guy just keeps splitting things into equal groups. So these, the storyline is that these numbers live inside of a sofa and they solve math problems. You'll like it. So there are two videos here. This is called Number Jacks Fractions. And this one, is it's also Number Jacks, but it's specifically about splitting things in half. So I hope you enjoyed our fraction lesson for today. We'll talk some more math tomorrow.